Hello there, I'm Joseph, and I'm here today with my father, Clinton, and there's somewhat of a buzz here on our cherry farm in central Portugal, just outside of Fundao, because we're up by the beehives, as you could probably tell. And uh, we're doing a hive inspection. We have to do hive inspections every couple of weeks just to see how the bees are getting on, see if there's anything we need to, uh, to do, see if there's anything we need to amend, see if they, uh, if they need any helping hand at all. Um, but yeah, um, today we're looking to see if they, uh, if they are ready for a honey super to be put on top. We think they probably are. We haven't, uh, we haven't checked for a couple of weeks, so we need to see if there's a good amount of bees in there. And assuming there is, which we hope there is, um, then that means they are going to be ready to uh, increase their population, which they're doing constantly. And uh, once they increase their population to a certain size, they are going to need these honey supers to be put on top. If you don't do that, it means that the, um, that the hive population gets too big for the hive that you've got and then they will swarm and you'll lose half of your bees. So yeah, let's do a hive inspection. Okay, we've got the smoker lit and, uh, and yeah, now we're going into our little apiary. Uh, we're not professional beekeepers, as I'm sure you're about to find out. And um, yeah, we've only kept them for, I think, a year and a half or something like that. Now, I think it's about a year and a half. Last year uh, last year was our first full year doing them, I believe. And um, and yeah, we created a split. So we started off with two hives and then we uh, we made ourselves a third hive. Before this uh, before this smoker runs out, I'm going uh, to make my way to the beehives. So here we are. We're going to approach the back of the beehives here. And I'm just going to give a little touch of smoke into the entrance there. The smoke calms the bees down and this allows us to enter the hives. And the first thing we need to do is of course be very gentle and very careful with the hives themselves so we don't spook the bees. So we gently, gently punch through the uh, the propolis that the bees have used here to uh, seal shut all of the little gaps and everything inside their hive. And my word, it is a scorcher today. Not a day to be wearing a bee suit, I can assure you. It's uh, It's got to be 40 degrees centigrade here. <laughs> and my English, my English blood, wow, that's a nice amount of bees. I'm pleased with that. <laughs> My English blood cannot cope overly well with, with this heat. I am going to pop that just down there. And then I will give them another tiny amount of smoke just over the top there. You can hear the hive has started to hum. They're all letting each other know what is going on. Perhaps there's a problem, perhaps there's a bear coming in to get all the honey. <laughs> and now we're going to take a quick look at the frames. So if I get my tool here, I'm just going to gently, gently prise out any frames that are stuck down, like so. And yeah, I'm really not an expert with bees, as you definitely are about to find out. But I do find them ever so fascinating. They are the pinnacles of evolution, in my honest opinion. And their community is just astonishing. Another little tiny bit of smoke, because... <laughs> I can hear all these guys humming, and my word, this is really a nice hive. We are going to be ready for a honey super on here very, very shortly indeed. If you look, it's difficult to see now because I've smoked them, so the bees have actually now gone down. But there was, when we opened this, you can see the amount of bees that were here. We're covering a good majority of all of these frames. Uh, and what will happen here is you'll have uh, some frames that will have uh, food on them, so you'll have the food ones generally on the outside and the brood on the uh, on the middle there and yeah like i say i'm not a professional so people are going to probably correct me if i say something wrong in the comments here <laughs> what we're looking for here really 
is that at least uh, well about seven of these frames uh, there's ten frames here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so if we had about seven in the middle that were all brood frames so they were all um, eggs and larvae and whatnot young little bees then um, then that would mean that we're gonna have a, a big boost in the population so that would mean we would need to put a honey super on here a honey super is a shorter a shorter uh, box the brood box here is quite a deep one they actually call them a deep and a deep box and uh, and then the honey super is like it's about half the size uh, that's because the honey is super heavy you'll have uh, <laughs> less frames you won't have 10 because uh, the brood frames are uh, narrower um, they need a, a gap of about I think it's like 3.5 mil or something like that I can't remember to go in between the um, in between the frames and then um, and then yeah with the honey they they pack them right out so <laughs> so you need um, less less frames in there but yeah anyway let's crack on and let's see if we can um, if we can get some of those frames out right yeah so I've got my little hive tool here and I am going to ever so gently the bees don't like any sort of sharp movement so ever so gently lift that first frame out and yep it's a honey frame as to be expected on the edge there how about that dad <laughs> Quite a few bees on this side, Joe. And a nice colour. Lovely colour. Beautiful. So a nice strong hive. This is what we were hoping to see really, wasn't it, Dad? Yeah, we thought we might be. Yeah. I'm sorry, I've blocked your face there. <laughs> <laughs> nice amount of honey. Look at that colour. Absolutely gorgeous. So we won't ever take any of the... Uh, I'll leave this frame just down here for the moment. We won't ever take any of the honey from these, uh, these bottom, bottom um, brood boxes because uh, this this is all for the bees so we will only ever take the excess honey the surplus so uh, the honey the bees actually won't won't use Ooh, stuck there we go hope i didn't shake the bees <laughs> and yeah i won't show you every frame because uh, they are all much the same but yeah today we're just looking to see what what exactly we have in here so these outside couple are of course food food frames let's see how many how many brood we have so it is like I said an absolute scorcher I've got sweat dripping off the end of my nose and <laughs> this is a uh, a very hot day to be wearing a bee suit but the hives look absolutely fantastic and I'm really really chuffed about that uh, as you can hear from all of this buzzing and see from all of the frames they are teeming with bees so you couldn't ask for more and if if we had have had um, more forgiving weather this year in the spring then uh, then I'm sure we would have had lots of cherries because of all of these uh, all of these bees but yeah because of the rain and the uh, and the sharp little frosts that we had during the uh, during the blossom period uh, unfortunately that meant that the bees were inside their hives they were not they were not doing their jobs out and about pollinating but yeah I think we've um we've looked at all the hives we're very happy so I think they'd call it a, a, a day at that and I don't know about you dad but I am after a leisurely afternoon now because I am dripping <laughs> so yeah we're going to crack on with the work here get this finished up nice and quick and then I don't know afternoon by the lake sounds good to me sounds yeah. good to me yeah. Radio, we've just got down to our local fishing lake, Barajin de Pisco. It's a beautiful big dam, and as you've probably noticed, I've got a uh, I've got a guest to the channel here with me. Uh, viewers that have been with us a long time will know Lloyd. He's my brother-in-law. He used to be on the channel an awful lot, nearly every week, and uh, and he's a cracking chap. He's a lovely lad. But um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so um, yeah, a lot of you have been asking uh, where is Lloyd? You haven't seen him for ages. Well, uh, I thought I'd bring him along today, do a spot of fishing with him, and uh, and then maybe he could he could explain what he's been up to. He's busy. been um, he's been he's been busy. He's been a busy bee keeping the bee theme this week. Without the stings, but um, <laughs> long story short. We've obviously got the uh, the house of which you saw on a previous episode. Uh, however, we've also bought another property in Al Qaeda, um, which is more suited to us. It was 
virtually ready available it's ready to go done a bit of painting odd jobs all easy simple simple jobs but it's something <laughs> that we can tailor it to our needs make it our family home yeah yeah um, we're still going to do the, the the house which obviously you'll you'll you, you document and you can see everyone can see the process but I mean, you can't see it. my shoes are covered in paint. <laughs> the past week has, has physically just been painting everything white, then going over with fine little details. And uh, yeah, we're in love. The the village, oh. um, I'm sure you'll see in a video it's, of Joe. I was going to say, it's a beautiful village, Alcade. Oh, and I think I'm probably going to do, I'm going to do a village tour there, I think, because yeah, it is um, a stunning place. We, we didn't even know. Joe told me, I, well, we kept it a surprise, but um, Joe told me that they've got um, a mushroom festival. Yep. And I'm so looking forward to it. Can't wait. I love <laughs> mushrooms. Lucy's not so keen, but I love mushrooms and just beer. I, I literally cannot wait. And Everything that, the festival has, yeah, oh, mushrooms and beer. Yeah. At this point, George, um, he's grown up so much. He's going to be running around, and uh, I, I physically cannot wait. It's going to be oh. awesome. <laughs> but okay, right. So uh, now you've you've heard what Lloyd's up to. I think it's uh, it's time we do a, a little spot of fishing. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> We're probably going to call it call it a day with the uh, with the fishing. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's been brought to a, a bit of an end as we had a uh, a very sharp thunderstorm there. Uh, so we just thought we'd uh, we'd call it a day. Um, with all, with all of that hot muggy weather, um, yeah, that a storm has rolled in and there was lightning and everything and. Yeah, and we're just thinking maybe maybe call it a day at that. But yeah, we didn't catch too much, only turtle. Uh, so we're not going to be uh, <laughs> not going to be having uh, too much for supper tonight. Uh, we're both going to go hungry unless we fancy turtle soup, of course. But no, the uh, the turtle has been released. <laughs> he. Um, he uh, he got the, the hook taken out by me and Lloyd, and uh, and then we uh, tossed him back, and he ran back into the water. Uh, Lloyd was using uh, predominantly uh, these jelly jelly lures. They're the best thing for largemouth bass, which is what uh, which is what predominantly is in this lake here, and quite a lot of the lakes in our area. They also say not for not for human consumption on there. I don't know, but um, but yeah, they're they're normally quite good here. I was using worms. I do like to use um, uh, lures as well. Where I like to spin in the uh, in the lakes, but uh, and the rivers as well, of course. But um, but yeah, I do find that you uh, with the with the worms you do find some surprises every now and again from today. The, uh, the turtle. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's that. Me and Lloyd are uh, gonna shoot off now. I think we're gonna go for a nice cold drink. Hey Lloyd. Let's go. <laughs> I'm buying my round. <laughs> Okay, we're now back in the farmhouse kitchen, and that was a lovely afternoon down by the lake. Unfortunately, it's turned somewhat grey outside though. The heavens have opened. Um, we've, uh, we've had a nice short, sharp downpour, and uh, of course we need that. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been quite dry, so we do need that. But uh, it did call an end to our fishing somewhat, somewhat prematurely. But um, continuing the theme on from this week's episode with the bees and with the fishing, uh, I thought I would do a, a very, a very uh, similar type of dish now. So I've got some trout here. These are some locally sourced trout from the uh, from the Rio Zeza, the river that's not too far away in a village called Paul. And uh, yeah, I think they're uh, they're uh, brown trout, so that's uh, that's nice. And uh, and we've got here some honey from our own bees. 
Uh, this was harvested last year. We harvested uh, 20 kilos of honey between uh, the two hives. We didn't take from the third hive, which was a split because that was a newly produced hive. So we left the honey for those that uh, we left the honey for the bees in that hive. So uh, so this is this is one kilo of our own honey. I'm not going to be using the whole thing in the recipe. Uh, I've got some uh, some of our own uh, extra virgin olive oil here from our farm. Uh, a lovely lovely little lime, some flat leaf parsley, uh, a thumb of ginger. A clove of garlic, some salt, some five pepper, and of course some of uh, Fundal's uh, white wine. So yeah, let's uh, let's do some baked trout. Thank you for the kiss. Okay, that just about brings an end to this week here on the farm. We've had uh, somewhat of a more leisurely week this week. We still have been picking cherries, but uh, we're really at about the end of our harvest now. So we're uh, so we're on the on the tail end. So it's not not very exciting. There's only a, a smaller amount of cherries to pick. Of course, the, the harvest, normally speaking, would uh, would go on for quite a few more weeks than this. Uh, it would last around 10 to 12 weeks uh, on a normal year. But as I've said, and I'm sure you're bored of me saying every week um, yeah this year is not a normal year for cherries it is uh, quite a poor crop uh, specifically on our farm unfortunately due to us being organic and uh, and due to uh, that short sharp frost we had in the salt in, in the, the microclimate of our of our little valley here but um, oh well you can't win them all
but yeah. I don't know if you just heard that, but there's thunder going on in the background. That's why I've got Mitzi here with me on the veranda, because uh, she is she's quite a, somewhat of a scaredy cat or a scaredy dog, aren't you, Mitz? Um, she doesn't like thunder. There it goes again. <laughs> uh, Lily, our other dog, she doesn't mind the thunder at all, so she's running around on the farm doing whatever she's doing, smelling flowers and whatnot. But yeah, so it has been quite leisurely this week. We've um, we've done a hive inspection. Uh, it's the first time you've seen the bees on the channel for quite a while now, so that was quite nice to, to show you them as, uh, again. And um, and we went fishing as well, or should I say me and Lloyd went turtling rather than fishing. We didn't catch any fish, but we did catch uh, <laughs> that nice big uh, turtle or terrapin, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what it is. But um, yeah, that was that was quite interesting to see. That was very, very fun indeed. But yeah, it's been um, it's been a nice week. Uh, we're looking forward to the summer coming now. Uh, it's it's definitely already started to get quite warm. This week has been somewhat of a heatwave. It's been uh, up to about 40 degrees, uh, about 37, 38 degrees, something like that, and muggy with it, very uh, very humid, and that's because of uh, this storm that's been rolling in. But once this storm has passed now, I should imagine we'll be rolling into the summer. And um, and lots of lots of warm weather and fun days coming with it, I think. Hey, Mitz. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very very much for watching. There's another big roll of thunder there. <laughs> thank you very very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing week. And me and Mitz are going to hunker down now and uh, and hide from that hide from that thunder. <laughs> I hope you can hear that. It's a uh, it's a uh, a big thunderstorm. But yeah, have an amazing week, everyone. I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Bye bye. <laughs>